Let's go up the coast ourselves, about 45 miles to Fort Pierce. My colleague Mike Seidel is on the watch right there. Mike? And we've got our own uh, power issues uh, statewide. 84,000 customers now without power. We showed you the flashes up north at the Cape. I want to show you some here just in our brand new video from the Fort Pierce, Pierce area where I am just out, outside of I-95, just the west side of I-95. And you can see uh, the bluish tint to these flashes. Uh, officially, last time I checked, their peak gust 51 miles an hour, but boy, the wind certainly has ramped up and it's more consistent. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's blowing pretty good and we're getting more frequent gusts, upwards of 30 to 40 uh, miles an hour. And uh, Brian Norcross, let's bring you back in uh, from the uh, Atlanta Weather Channel headquarters and talk more about uh, the short term. We've been uh, dissecting the uh, eye wall, the collapse of the inner eye wall and the outer eye wall taking over and some of the and that band coming in and potentially uh, producing some gusts even higher uh, than uh, hurricane force or 74 miles an hour mike not uh, that far from you in jensen beach which is just down there by jupiter a 71 mile per hour gust here uh, mike it takes the strong wind to get the uh, the maximum storm surge. So there's our track. There's the National Hurricane Center track just offshore of Cape Canaveral. So that's where we're thinking the strongest winds are finally going to come ashore. Brevard County looks like right now. All right, Mike Seidel, back to you in full first. Okay, thanks, Brian Norcross. Let's head up the beach to Daytona Beach. Just check the uh, observation there. Lamp knob, uh, gust of 46 miles an hour. NBC's Jay Gray is there. Now the observation is at the airport out by I-95 at the racetrack. Where are you, Jay? How close are you to the actual uh, famous beach there in Daytona? Hey there, Mike. We had to move off the beach to a more secure location end of next week as well. Okay, Jay Gray from NBC up at Daytona Beach. Uh, the worst yet to come up there, certainly from a a wind perspective and a storm surge and rainfall total perspective as we get uh, we are getting whacked here in uh, fort pierce winds now consistently gusting 35 to 40 miles an hour yes not hurricane force yet but we still have those bands uh, in the outer eye wall to come on through so far though so good if there's any good news this evening is that the uh, center and the core of matthew is staying off the coast now, earlier today, we thought by this point, or certainly in the next few hours, it would be right along the coast. Uh, right now, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. Uh, the National Hurricane Center has adjusted its track a little bit more to the east. That's not to say it could wobble back. And even mentioned that, in fact, a couple of the short-range models uh, that we look at are still showing that. The last time I looked, about an hour ago. So we're, we're a long way from being out of the woods in this part of Florida. And we still have uh, the uh, Space Coast, the First Coast of Jacksonville area, Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, you're in line for some uh, really rough weather. Uh, could be destructive too. Catastrophic is not out of the question, certainly in some areas. Uh, the Georgia coast, the St. Simons, Tidy, Savannah, and then up towards uh, Hilton Head, Edisto, and Charleston as we get into later tomorrow. And Saturday will be the uh, crunch time for Charleston, South Carolina. As Matthew continues its trek, uh, right now northwest at 13 miles an hour, the 11 o'clock update, uh, maximum sustained winds of 130 miles an hour, so that's right at the lower end of the Category 4. But even if it goes to a strong three, a week four, uh, the impacts are no different. Brian Norcross will tell you that. Uh, it's uh, all about the number, but uh, there's no difference in the impact between 130 miles an hour and 125 miles an hour. Brian? Yeah, and so as if what happens here is that outer eye wall takes over. All right, Mike Seidel in uh, Fort Pierce. I haven't checked the radar here in the last 10 minutes. I know it changes quickly. What's going on there now? Back to you. Uh, still very, very windy, uh, gradually ramping up. Our peak gusts so far just over 50 miles an hour. Not raining particularly hard, but the power numbers keep going up. 84,000 statewide, and no surprise, Palm Beach County has uh, uh, the highest number of power outages. 38,000 customers in uh, Palm Beach County. That's where they've had the strongest winds because they've had uh, the uh, strongest bands come on shore. No doubt those numbers will continue to go up as we see the hurricane go up the coast. But right now, though, it's behaving. It's not coming towards the coast. And that's keeping that, that strongest core winds offshore. Let's go to Ron Blum. He's had winds over 60 miles an hour there. And Juno Beach, north of Palm Beach. And Ron, you've seen some power flashes yourself down there tonight. 
We've seen a couple, but I'm still seeing most of the lights on in, in the area. So still a lot of danger out here tonight, but not as bad as it could have been, Mike, but it's still headed your way. It is, and uh, the wind can warm pretty good right now. We're getting into one of these squalls, and in the distance you can see the rain and the wind whipping the trees here at the hotels. The power is still up full force. Let's hope it stays that way for everybody out there, but that's unlikely uh, the case now, as Ron mentioned now, 90,000 customers, and just about an hour and a half ago, we were at 15,000 statewide. By the way, I've been at the Weather Channel now 25 years, and we don't mess around when we cover major storms, whether it's a blizzard or a hurricane like Matthew. We've got 13 meteorologists and reporters out on this one, 13 crews. You can't top that. We've got more coming up. Stay with us. Yeah, we thought it wasn't a big deal, but everyone just kind of rushed before us, you know. So, so now uh, it's up to us to figure this out. So you guys are here from the Netherlands, yeah. and you're going to have to ride out a storm in a shelter. Mm -hmm. I'm so scared, really. I don't want this, but I have to. It's my first hurricane, so a little nervous. Now some folks just decide to stay home, and sometimes you regret that, but there are some uh, folks that we talked to in Fort Lauderdale. Fortunately, Broward County not uh, getting hit very hard at all. They're down to a tropical storm warning. Not to say that it's not safe down there tonight. Uh, or, uh, it's, you know, you need to stay home. And, uh, and we even talked to the mayor earlier uh, to, you know, stay home at least till midnight. And just wait it out till tomorrow morning. Things will open back up as well as uh, not only commercial businesses, but also the airports, Fort Lauderdale and Miami International. Palm fronds, that seems to be the thing that is being blown down right now uh, here in Fort Pierce. Winds have gusted to 51 miles an hour. Take a look at the radar, and you can see the band and that uh, outer eye wall right off the coast. But you know, it's rotating in, it's rotating our way, but it's also rotating south. Our winds here are blowing north, and the same goes for the uh, Palm Beach area. Notice the peak winds right now. Melbourne, 33 gusts to 49. That's a pretty healthy wind, and as we've uh, noted from uh, the space coast, from Cape Canaveral and the uh, satellite beach area all the way down to the Palm Beaches, that has certainly been a problem, knocking out power. Right now, latest number in, 95,000 customers in Florida without power. There's your timing in the Palm Beaches again. Hurricane force wind gusts potentially overnight. That's 74 miles an hour or higher, although the airport inland is only gusted in the low 50s. The beaches have gusted up there in the mid to the upper 60s. Uh, we're still looking for gusty winds tomorrow morning. Tropical storm force winds tomorrow morning. By tomorrow afternoon, they'll start to abate and the sun will start to return. And we're going to have a fair amount of rain and the storm surge still up a little bit. But I think that's going to start to back off because the winds now are blowing northerly as Matthew heads northwest. When we get on the back side, those northerly winds are not going to push the water onto the coast but push the water uh, down the coast. Boy, this is uh, raucous right now. We're getting a pretty good uh, little uh, gust of wind out here, rotating around. Let's uh, take a walk over here and take a look at the trees. And you can see how the rain and the wind whipping around the hotel here in Fort Pierce. It's uh, blowing pretty good right now. Uh, these uh, gusts, again, 45 to 50 miles an hour. It's Let's go to uh, Brian Norcross as we head towards the midnight hour on the East Coast. Brian, this is uh, what we've been looking at on the radar. This squall coming right at us now uh, across 95 off the beaches right into our location here in Fort Pierce. Yeah, wow, that is uh, that is not the outer eye wall. That's a band just outside of that, a spiral band. I'll show you on the radar in just a second. But we have